Hello everybody and welcome to this short video which is designed to give you a basic introduction to how to create graphs in Excel, which is a skill that you'll not only be using in, in this lab but also future labs, so it's important. Here what you're looking at is a blank version of the class spreadsheet. Um, by the time you guys get to it, you will be um, seeing a whole bunch of data in these areas here filled out by you and your classmates. And your goal will be to take the average of this data, which is calculated automatically by the spreadsheet in the lower right corner here, we'll see the average change in the mass. And you want to graph those average values against the concentration uh, for each of the four different cells that you arranged in this lab across uh, the entire class. Now when you create this graph, you don't want to do it in here because this is the shared spreadsheet. And so if you create it here, then it's going to show up for everybody. So instead, you want to open a new spreadsheet by going to the upper left hand corner and choosing new. And now we are presented with a fresh blank workbook here. Once you get to your blank workbook here, you will need to input some data into a chart um, in a way that can be used here. And the data that you want is from our class spreadsheet here. So you're going to create a table in here that matches the concentration against the average change in mass. And you will input those numbers Let's say, for example, for the one molar concentration, there was an average change of mass of, um, let's say it was minus 30 grams. Um, these are hypothetical numbers. And you'll do the same thing for 0 0.6, for 0.2, and for zero. And these numbers down here all come from the averages in the spreadsheet. So. Um, rather than make up hypothetical numbers for, for this graph, I'm going to show you what a hypothetical graph of two other variables might look like. Um, let's say we were trying to create a graph to show the impact of uh, time spent studying on um, the grade on the exam. Actually, let's put hours spent studying to be more specific. And let's say that if you spent no hours studying, the average class grade was 45. If you spent three hours studying, the average class grade was 63. Uh, if you spent six hours studying, the average class grade was uh, 88. And nine hours, it's a 97. So this should somewhat resemble what your graph should look like. And what you want to do with all of your graphs is make sure that the independent variable is the one that's represented on the x or the horizontal axis. Remember, the independent variable is the one that dictates or controls the outcome of the dependent variable. So here, the hour spent studying would be the independent variable because the hour spent studying dictates the grade on exam, which is the dependent variable. So this means we want the hour spent studying to be on the horizontal axis of the graph, and we want the grade on the exam to be represented on the vertical axis. Now Excel is pretty smart, and it can usually auto-generate these graphs for you. So if you highlight the data that you want to be included, and then you go up and click Insert, then there's a button here called Recommended Charts. And this on the right hand panel will give you a series of predictions of what type of graph you might like to create from this data. As you can see, we have a scatter plot with dots. We have two different types of bar graphs, and then we have a pie chart as well. And we are looking for a bar graph here. And so I am going to choose this graph right here because we can clearly see that the independent variable, that is the hour spent studying, is represented here on the x-axis. So if I click to insert this chart, 
then here we have it. We have a beautiful graph where we have our independent variable on the x-axis, we have our dependent variable on the y-axis, and if you uh, want to edit these labels here, you can. Double click and it will come up with a uh, formatting section here where you can choose uh, all sorts of, of features about these labels. You can also edit the title of the graph. So maybe we want the, the graph to be titled something more useful. We want it to say impact of study time on exam grade. So now we have a meaningful title and a useful graph. So this is the process that you should go through when you are creating your graph of your diffusion and osmosis data for the class. And it's also the process that you should go through when creating uh, graphs for future labs as well.